Uh, oh, hello, everyone. Um, I think that we can start. Um, so, um, first of all, I would like to say that I really liked uh, Jed's previous talk about uh, SLinux and uh, Qvert. And I think it's uh, it was a great idea because um, it lets us uh, get an introduction to a cool new technology, but um, also lets us see a real use case that we're familiar with. And uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, so I decided to do something similar with uh, C groups. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, C groups and uh, how it's related to Qubit, and specifically how um, we're utilizing it to um, to handle with the dedicated CPU um, issue. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the current status and the future plans. Um, yeah, so let's begin. So first of all, the agenda, I'm going to give a brief C group uh, introduction. Uh, what are C groups and uh, V1 uh, versus V2? Um, then we're going to, to have a look on C groups and Kubernetes resource management. They're, uh, they're very much related. And then uh, we're going to spec the compute container that actually runs there and the current implementation of uh, um, dedicated CPUs and problems with it. And then we're going to see the housekeeping C group approach um, to handle with this problem, and then the dedicated C group approach, and then to some FAQ and QA. Okay, so first of all, a quick introduction to C group. So, uh, according to Wikipedia, C groups um, uh, is a Linux kernel feature that limits account for and all isolates uh, resource usages like CPU, memory, disk, IO network for a collection of processes. Um, so in uh, this pre uh, presentation, I would focus uh, mainly on the CPU, um, but uh, we can uh, manage uh, a lot of uh, resources um, um, for certain groups of uh, processes. Basically, this is the one of the three main features that uh, containers are built by. Um, and its base, uh, basic architecture is basically a tree of resources. And every node uh, at, in this tree splits the resources between uh, its children, and the processes live under a certain a C group. And basically, that C group uh, defines the limitations and uh, configurations of different uh, resources that uh, the process can, can use or can see. Um, so we have two versions of C groups in, inside the kernel. Uh, we have uh, version one and version two. Um, so uh, version two was designed in, in, a, in a way that's completely different from uh, version one. Uh, there is no backward compatibility. Um, and yeah, they're, they're pretty different, although they have a lot of uh, similarities. So let's briefly explore each version and see the differences between them. Um, so first of all, um, C group V1, um, the first node in the tree, the, the root C group, um, has a child for every um, uh, controller. Now, controller is also called a subsystem, and that's basically what's um, uh, uh, what manages the resources. Um, and we have basically a, a CPU controller, CPU set controller, memory controller, and so on. Um, so the, the root C group is always located at uh, slash C slash FS slash C group. And uh, as I said, uh, we have a, a another uh, directory within it for, for every um, controller. Um, now, essentially, every controller has a substructure which essentially represents pods, and the pods had the child um, C group for every container. Um, so let's now see it uh, visually. So um, here we have the root C group. And as I said, it has a, um, a child C group for every one of the controllers. So CPU controller, CPU set controller, et cetera. Um, underneath, it has a C group for, um, for guaranteed QoS pods. We're going to talk about it a bit later, uh, what, what it means exactly. Um, but in any case, under this C group, um, we have um, a child C group for every pod in our, uh, in our system, and every pod has a children uh, children C group for every one of their containers. Um, so this is basically how it looked like how it looks like. And uh, it's important to understand that this kind of um, uh, tree structure exists for every one of the controllers. Um, this example shows the CPU set controller, but um, the exact same structure exists for the uh, every other controllers in the system. 
And um, down below, you can see an example for, for a path for, uh, for, for the C group. So uh, you can see the C set as C group and then CPU set. That's just an example for one of the controllers. And then the QPod slice, where the guaranteed QS uh, uh, pod lives. And then uh, another C group for the pod and another C group for the container itself. So um, C group V1 had um, uh, many problems. So um, in C group V1, a process or a thread uh, needs to belong basically to many controllers. Let's say that we have a process that we want to manage its CPU, we want to uh, manage its memory. Uh, so we need to assign the process into two different controllers. And we need to define these controllers uh, separately. Um, so this is one complication. Um, furthermore, there are very little to no restrictions at all. Uh, every process and thread can live in every C group they want. Um, and the problem is that this is uh, error prone and, and complicated uh, to coordinate between the controllers. Um, and there's also a quote from the main pages down here on, on this exact same issue. But um, basically, let's say with that we have a process, it has many threads. That, let's say that we want to uh, configure a different um, um, uh, C group uh, configuration for each thread. So we need, we need to, to define everything for each uh, controller um, separately. Um, and this simply becomes uh, too complicated. So in uh, C groups V2, uh, all controllers reside in a single unified hierarchy. Um, we have uh, many restrictions. Some of them are uh, the, the internal process rule. Um, process, processes may uh, reside only in leaf nodes. So you cannot um, assign a process to, um, to uh, a C group in the middle of the tree, only at the bottom of it. Um, the root C group is an exception, of course, and there is another exception, uh, threaded mode, which I'm going to mention a bit later. Um, and all of the threads of a process must live within uh, its subtree. That's another uh, restriction. Um, and there are many more restrictions, which I'm not uh, going to go into. Um, so this is how, how it looks, basically. You remember that previously we had a child controller uh, uh, for every controller. Now it simply doesn't exist. We have a, a sin, single unified hierarchy. Um, this is, uh, except for this, it's, it's the same as before, right? Uh, we have the, the pupil slice for guaranteed QoS pods, and then a C groups for every pod, and then a C group for every container of the pod. Um, and in, in this model, in, in the C group V2, every one of the, the C groups has a list of, of containers that are enabled for the C group. And they're all configured at the same place. Um, so it's, it, it's much easier to manage. And as you can see uh, down below, the path is now changed. Uh, there is a single hierarchy. Uh, and only at the end, we have a CPU dot something files to configure the CPU set um, uh, uh, controller. Uh, we have also CPU dot something files and memory dot something. Um, and yeah, that this is the these are some of the main differences between C groups V1 and V2. Um, so now that, let's talk a bit about C groups and Kubernetes. So Kubernetes resource resource management and C groups are uh, tightly related. Um, the Kubel does a lot of its magic uh, using C groups, and um, let's now see an example for it. So in Kubernetes, every container has its own dedicated C group. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way technically, but that's um, how Kubernetes decided to, to implement it. Um, and in Kubernetes, we have three uh, quality of service classes um, that are determined by the resource requests and limits. So basically, we have best efforts, first of all, and guarantee. Um, and they, they, um, they have implications of many uh, stuff like scheduling and priority and, uh, and uh, resource allocation and stuff like that. I'm not going to dive um, uh, into that too much, but uh, what I want you to remember is in order for a container to be in a guaranteed quality of service or, or for a pod to be in a, in a guaranteed quality of service, all the containers in the pod need to define limited and crest, and they need to be equal. Um, so further than that, with a CPU manager enabled, it's possible to get pinned CPUs or dedicated CPUs um, uh, they're the same thing. Um, and that means that basically we have um, 
a number of cores, CPU cores, that are being exclusively allocated to the container. Nobody else in the system would allow to use them. And uh, the pod needs to be uh, in guaranteed quality of service for it to happen. And the container needs uh, CPU requests uh, to equal the limit and to be an integer, not a fractional body. OK, so now back to Kubernetes. Um, so the compute container, what's, what's running in there? So um, in, in the right-hand side, you can see a list of threads that are running inside the, 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 the compute container. Uh, what's marked here in red are um, threads that are uh, children of the QAM UKVM process. And what's marked in, in orange are the, the children of libvirt. So we, as we can see, there are many threads uh, that, that are living here. And they have um, uh, different priorities. And of course, it depends on the, on the use case. But I'm going to focus on real-time VM uh, use case here. So let's try to think about the priorities of, of these uh, different threads. So uh, for example, at a monitoring, we could have stuff that are related to monitoring. So uh, for example, for clock D, uh, we're using that for, for uh, populating logs from QEMU and Libvirt into Kubernetes logs. And we can, I think, agree that this is, that it doesn't have a, the highest priority in there. Maybe a bit higher priority is stuff like uh, IO thread and uh, RPC Libvirt D, or uh, meaning the communication between Libvirt D and QEMU processes. Um, but we certainly agree, I think, that the most important things here, at least for real-time VMs, is the vCPU. Uh, which are excellent, actually the, the CPUs as the guest sees them. So um, we have different priorities, and some sibling threads of the same um, uh, process have different priorities. OK, so until now, this was a, a, an introduction. But now to a million dollar question. So how do we guarantee that a VM has true dedicated uh, CPUs? And uh, we can see a sample of a VMI manifest here. Basically, somebody asks for two cores and for dedicated CPU plans. So what we can do in order to guarantee that this is really uh, what's happening. So first of all, let's talk about the current implementation and uh, the problems of it. So uh, what we're doing right now is that basically we're providing the, the dedicated CPUs to compute. And uh, you can see the virtual launcher pod on the right-hand side. So uh, if we're asking for two cores, we will simply ask for two CPUs, uh, both in the limits and request of the co compute container. Um, as, I, as I said earlier, this would mean that, that these two um, CPUs are uh, pinned because they are uh, because the limits uh, equals the request and it's a, an integer value. But as we've seen before, uh, many threads run on the compute uh, container. And um, this means that we are basically lying to the guest because um, CPUs are not really dedicated to the uh, guest CPUs, but are shared uh, between the many threads in, in the compute containers. Now, it's important to understand that from the host perspective, a vCPU is just another thread. Uh, it doesn't mean anything special. And therefore, what will happen is that um, the, uh, uh, the vCPUs would, um, would uh, have a context switch uh, in order to switch to other uh, threads inside the compute container, layer libvirt d. And uh, we don't want that. That basically means that these, uh, these CPUs are dedicated to the guest. We're using them for other stuff as well, uh, managerial tasks that um, and, and this behavior is not expected from the guest perspective. So um, first, let's see the housekeeping cgroup approach um, that aims to, to solve this problem. Um, so let's imagine that a VM with X dedicated CPUs is being created. Um, so what, what uh, we're going to do under this approach, uh, we set a compute container to actually request X plus one pin CPUs. So if um, so, talking about the, the example from before, we will ask uh, for three CPUs, not only for two. And then the compute container uh, creates a child C group for uh, low priority uh, threads. Um, this is called the housekeeping secret. And all of the process, uh, processes or threads, um, except for the XVCPU, are moved into it, uh, meaning uh, only the VCPUs are, are, uh, 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 remain living under the, the compute container. 
All of the other threads are moved into the housekeeping CPU, which have uh, which has one uh, uh, dedicated CPU. So basically, all of the managerial tasks are going to run on a dedicated core, and all of the vCPUs are going to run on a dedicated core. So this is how it looks like. Um, we're going to have our compute container with X plus one dedicated CPUs. Uh, the vCPUs are going to run uh, um, underneath it, I mean, in, in the compute uh, uh, C group. Um, it would have a child C group with, uh, with one dedicated core with all the other stuff that are less important. Um, by the way, uh, you, might, you might ask yourself, um, why doesn't this break the internal process rule, right? I mean, um, the vCPUs are under the compute, although it's not a leaf anymore. And that's because of, uh, of, um, of a threaded mode. Uh, and basically, we can break this rule if we're uh, talking uh, specifically about threads. Um, again, not, not going to dive uh, into that, but just know that this is legal because we're talking about threads here. Okay, so now what, what are the problems with this approach? Um, so first of all, this approach is, is nice because um, it allows us to, to really guarantee true dedicated CPUs for the guests. So in this perspective, it's great. Uh, but it has a few problems. Uh, first of all, we waste one dedicated core, <coughs> sorry, that we don't actually need, right? Um, we, we, we wouldn't want um, to, to allocate a full core for these managerial tasks. Um, and we're focused, another problem, design problem, is that we're focused about around the lowest priority uh, processes. Um, and I think it should be reversed, right? I mean, when we think about it, um, uh, it's worth saying, I want to deal with vCPUs differently. So uh, um, I would take action on everything else, every other process, uh, not the vCPU, but everything, everything else, in order to do something that I want to do with the vCPUs. Um, and this is also not very um, generic. I mean, it's wrapped around a specific use case. Uh, because what happens if in the future we want to introduce more C groups and, and refine the resource management and do all sorts of other stuff? Um, with this design, we're really, uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's wrapped around a specific use case uh, with a specific idea. Um, and I think that that, that is a problem. Um, so, but, but what are the challenges? Um, because it, it has a, 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 there's a good reason that um, uh, this approach uh, um, has these problems. So uh, first let's look at the extra core problem. So ideally what we would want to have is X dedicated uh, CPUs and uh, another like, uh, 0 0.2 uh, CPUs that are shared and not dedicated for all the managerial stuff. Um, but the problem is that it's not possible with Kubernetes risk management model. And uh, as a reminder, for a dedicated CPU, uh, we did a guaranteed QoS pod with an integer amount of CPU. If we would say, um, please give me a compute container with 3.2 CPUs, it wouldn't be a guaranteed QoS. Therefore, um, the, the CPUs wouldn't be pinned anymore and we're uh, in a problem. So uh, we have to, to keep it an integer. Another challenge is um, uh, what I said before, that we're focused about what we don't care about. Um, so it would be good if we could um, do this in the reverse order. Uh, we would have a dedicated vCPU C group um, and, and maybe uh, keep the, the compute container as the housekeeping or, or the everything else. Um, but this is also not possible because um, of uh, cgroup v2 new rules. Um, and, uh, and as a reminder, all the threads of a process must live within the same subject. So um, one way is, is OK, but the other way um, is not uh, allowed by, uh, by cgroup uh, v2. Um, and this leads us to the uh, dedicated CPU approach. So let's say, again, that a VM uh, with dedicated CPUs is created. The main idea is that the compute container's resource are defined as usual. Nothing is changed. Um, we avoid um, requesting a dedicated CPU for it um, whatsoever, but we still need to keep it um, as a guaranteed QoS um, uh, bot or a container. 
Um, instead, we will request a new blank sidecar container with X dedicated CPUs. And then we would move the vCPU threads to DC group. So first of all, you might ask, you might ask yourself, um, how is this, is this even possible to have some of the threads of the same process in another container? I mean, some communication needs to happen here. Like the VIF CPUs needs to communicate with the PUMU process, which needs to communicate with uh, Libre-D. Um, and in order to achieve that, we would have to share process namespace between the containers in the pod. And luckily, this is now um, available. So this is just one of the uh, pod, uh, pod settings. I wasn't aware of that before I started working with it, but um, uh, it's not possible, so great. So um, here is how, how it looks uh, with, uh, with uh, C group V1. So um, um, this is a structure as we've seen before. I'm focusing on the CPU set controller right now. And basically Vert Launcher would have two with uh, different um, containers with two different secrets, one of them with X dedicated CPUs. This is where the vCPUs are going to live. And another compute, uh, compute container with Y shared CPUs that are not dedicated, um, and that's where all the other threads are going to live. And with C group V1, we can move only the vCPUs into the uh, new C group, um, and that's great. Basically, we are we avoid wasting an extra core. We have a complete separation of concerns. We focus on what matters. And uh, we keep the compute container as is, um, leaving a door open for more optimizations and changes in the future. So um, with V1, that works perfectly. But um, let's look about V2 for a second. Uh, what we can see here is that the vCPUs um, are children of the KVM QEMU process. Um, that's a problem because as you might remember, um, uh, all the threads of the uh, all threads of the of a process must live within its subtree. Um, so this is not allowed with uh, uh, C groups V two. So what about moving the the whole parent process, um, right? Um, uh, uh, the whole parent process. I'm sorry to the pods uh, C group. So moving the KVM QEMU into the virt launcher um, uh, C group. That would solve, uh, solve everything, right? But then we would break another rule because the, the, another requirement is the uh, internal process rule. We can't uh, assign processes uh, to a non-leaf uh, C groups. So uh, we have a non-ideal solution for V2, which is basically falling back to asking X plus one cores um, for C groups V2. Um, each uh, one of the vCPUs will be pinned to a physical CPU, all the other th threads would live on an extra CPU, just like in the housekeeping C groups. Um, currently, there is no uh, idea on how to get around that problem, um, and, and we don't have any better solutions. But uh, currently, V1 is way more popular. Uh, uh, V2 has just become stable in Kubernetes in 125, so probably uh, the vast majority of, the, of our users uh, are still using V1. Um, so we have some some time to think about it and maybe um, come with a better solution uh, in the future. Um, so this is how it looks like in in uh, C group V2. So we would have um, a, a dedicated vCPU C group, um, and inside it we would have um, um, X dedicated cores for the vCPUs and another dedicated core for every other threads that lives under the QEM the KVM QEMU process. All of the other um, threads and processes would still uh, remain in the C group, uh, in the compute C group. Um, yeah, so so we don't uh, only in, in V two we don't really uh, solve the wasted core problem yet, but I think it's much better in terms of uh, in, in design of and the other problems that I mentioned. Um, so a, a small FAQ. So um, you might ask yourself, uh, who's in charge of the C groups management, um, the assignment to the new C groups and everything else? So uh, at least in the POC, it's Vert Handler. Um, initially, we wanted uh, Vert Launcher to do that for us without intervention from uh, Vert Handler's side. And when I mean Vert Launcher, I mean the Vert Launcher process on the compute container. Um, and uh, we thought that's possible because now we have a cool trick to share uh, the file system uh, of, uh, of different processes 
uh, from different containers on the pod. Because what we can do is simply um, find the, the PID uh, and then um, um, get into the, the roots, uh, root file system for this process and then to the super. Um, but we have uh, problems with that. Um, uh, I was trying that and it seems like there, is, there are no uh, permissions to do that. Um, probably uh, SL Linux um, um, policies that um, don't allow us to do that. So we have to intervene from uh, Virtual Ender. Another question is what about live migration? And uh, we can move the vCPUs to their, uh, that, that's my answer uh, at least. We can move the vCPUs to their uh, new C group after they the migration ends. And this means that potentially we have a small windows of um, the, 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 the CPUs not being truly dedicated, uh, but for a very small uh, 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 amount of time. And I think that during migrations, um, not having dedicated CPUs for uh, for a few seconds is something that is um, that is fine. Um, but we're also exploring some leverage hooks that maybe could help us. Uh, something like before the migration starts, uh, the migration target starts. Uh, do something, um, but this is uh, this is left for another uh, for more exploration, and um, obviously we can always start from uh, simply marking these VMs and as non migratable. That's what uh, what's happening right now in the housekeeping group approach. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, if you have any question, you're welcome to ask them. Um, hey, Itamar. Um, awesome presentation. Thanks. Uh, I really like the structure. That was a good idea. <laughs> um, yeah, no, yeah, I, you, your idea of the dedicated C group thing is, I think, awesome. Um, I, I have a couple of questions. I know we're running late. So, um, yeah, sorry. But uh, I posted them in the QA, QA as well. Uh, you said we're lying to the guest, and yeah, indeed we are. But um, isn't like just regular bare metal uh, libvirt already lying to the guest? What do you mean by that? So when you're just using libvirt on a regular machine, uh, don't think about com containers or anything. Um, you can request dedicated CPUs for your guest, but libvirt doesn't actually do anything to reserve those CPUs on the system, does it? Um, so uh, let me see if I understand your question. Because what we are doing is is asking uh, Kubernetes to basically save these uh, pinned CPUs for us, um, and then we 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 we're assigning the vCPUs onto these uh, pinned CPUs. So uh, we don't ask. I mean, it, we don't do it uh, uh, through Libre. Uh, we're we're simply taking uh, the QMU threads and then assigning them to to a physical CPU. But then we in Libra we pin those the, we pin the vCPUs to the to the to the CPUs we got from CPU Manager, um, but it, it doesn't actually reserve them. So I assume it's the same on bare metal. Um, so is what it, you're it, saying is that even without Kubernetes, if we're using plain Libra on a host, uh, we won't get dedicated CPUs. I think so. I guess it's a it's a question for the Libra team more than than us, but. Yeah. Um, that's interesting, but I mean, from the host perspective, uh, this is the only thread that's going to run on the CPU either way. It doesn't matter really if, if Libvirt does something or not. Um, I mean, if, even if Libvirt doesn't do anything, uh, still the vCPU process uh, will run on a dedicated CPU. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's fine. OK, yeah, uh, I, we can skip the other question. <laughs> Sorry if I didn't uh, answer it uh, properly. No, no, that's, that was good. Um, so uh, I'll try to open the Q and A section. Is, if there's anything else in there? It's well hidden. It's just me in there. Ah, okay. So uh, yeah. does anybody else wanna? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask if this functionality is essential for VMs running BPDK processes. It sounds like it, but I want to see or to hear your uh, take on it. So I'm not sure, I'm not really familiar with it. But basically, this is important for every VM that assumes that it has a, a dedicated CPU and needs a, a, 
a, a very low uh, latency. Um, yeah, this uh, and, and especially for uh, real time VMs. But I, I don't know enough about uh, the PDK to answer that. <coughs> cool. Thank you. All right. So thank you, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, have a great day.